Okay, however, uh, thank you for for being in the, in the in the webinar. I'm Christian Pichardo. I have been a value communication and market access expert for the last uh, 15 years. I have been working in several organizations, consultancy firms, uh, pharmaceutical companies, and now I collaborate with Certara in, in the, as part of the support team, trying to identify uh, how can we use digital tools to uh, one, create new capabilities for the teams inside of the uh, healthcare industries, and two, uh, to try to communicate better the patient outcomes and uh, the, um, the metrics that are important for the for the other stakeholders as payers and uh, policymakers. So we will start our webinar, and we will talk about the transformation of several of these roles. So uh, we are at a crossroads in terms of uh, the development of the pharmaceutical industry. We have many trends that have been going on, and they are requesting a uh, value communication at all levels. So from the traditional perspective of the pharmaceutical industry that was mainly focused on R&D and commercial, now we have two new strategic areas that are collaborating. One of them is market access, and the other is medical affairs. However, uh, the value communication for them is very different. Uh, the R&D are less exposed to, to, to different stakeholders in the, in, that are related to the patient journey of the patients. So they can communicate uh, how can they approach new uh, new developments to try to meet with uh, the unmet needs of the populations. In the commercial teams, uh, they need now to create a tailored experience to engage with different levels of, of stakeholders and also trying to maximize uh, the impact and the efficiency of the interactions that they have uh, with the stakeholders along the patient journey. For market access, the, the value communication, it's more about Trying to um, trying to capitalize the commercial opportunities that are now being covered or um, blocked by access barriers. As you know, 90% um, of the pharmaceutical sales depend on on public or private payers. So market access has become a crucial uh, task for the medical affairs team and also for the commercial and R&D teams. Um, in terms of medical affairs. If we have, uh, and we will focus on that in, in this webinar, we are seeing a huge transformation. Previously, the role of medical affairs was more uh, very focused on evidence, very focused on being the experts on the product uh, and the disease. But now, the medical affairs role has been evolving and it has to incorporate data that comes from the, from the, from the patients, real world evidence, data from electronic medical records, data from patient reported outcomes that might not be collected during the clinical uh, trials stages. But also, they had to find a way to mine this data, to communicate it in a, in a comprehensive way, so it can impact and resonate with different audiences. And this is because the, the organizations, the pharmaceutical organizations have been changing in the way that they work and in the way that they engage with the real world with the with the with the people in the in the in the market and with the in with the stakeholders that are responsible for the patient journey so the organizations have been evolving from uh, silos like this was the traditional the traditional model of, of pharmaceutical organizations and they uh, where they have these different levels of, uh, of responsibilities, but uh, and each of the areas was responsible for particular tasks. So the conversations in those organizations were very related to tasks, to uh, trying to, to, to have deliverables. And for medical affairs, the implication was that the medical affairs teams were experts in scientific information, and that was their original role. However, as organizations started to, to move um, to respond to the, to the challenges in access and the challenges in the patient journeys, it, 
a new role appeared that was the role of a steward for the market taxes um, area and market taxes were responsible to trying to communicate value and to trying to harmonize the, the value that was communicated uh, for their different roles so market taxes was the first support role that was evolving into this more strategic role and medical affairs had a, a responsibility to be uh, to provide good guidance it was consulted to validate the assumptions and it was uh, like requested to engage in very specific uh, conversations with stakeholders however it was still a supporting role now in the new in the in the new approach to to pharmaceutical organizations everything is more patient or system centered so market access has started to 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 be a part of the plans of all the organizations and medical affairs is not the, the exception so this transformation in the organizations has changed the medical affairs role now uh, the medical affairs role has to not only be the expert in, in the disease but it has to it create a value through different new activities and we will see them in detail so let me let me show them to you so these are the different uh, new expected tasks and roles for medical affairs. It's expected that medical affairs has have a, a more strategic role, that it can collaborate with other functions, but not from the expert perspective, but from the from providing valuable advice about product development, um, clinical trial design, and most important for the affiliates, life cycle management. How can we better position a product how can we better communicate uh, the unmet need of, of of a particular patient but also evidence generation and communication uh, now uh, evidence data is very fragmented it's very decentralized so the medical affairs teams are now very responsible for identifying those data sources and trying to find a, a way uh, to incorporate them in a plan in a plan to support value communication and differentiation. Um, it's not that medical affairs will have a, a commercial role or that they, they will create m medical marketing. No, it's more about trying to identify the data that it's available to convey messages about the unmet need, the disease, and, um, and, the, and, the, and the outcomes that the patients are having in the real world. But also, a medical affairs is now more responsible of disseminating the scientific data so it's not that they just are going to be consulted by the marketing teams but that they have to include incorporate communication plans into the medical into the medical plans also they have to engage with key opinion leaders that that was like part of the traditional role of medical affairs but now it's not only about trying to gather requests from the key opinion leaders and trying to facilitate things for them but also trying to, to try to disseminate scientific knowledge and gather feedback from them uh, uh, to try to, to try to inform the strategic uh, approaches of the rest of the organization naturally in medical education it's part of the of the expected uh, role uh, and also trying to identify efficient ways to communicate data and to and to educate uh, healthcare professionals also the the collaboration with uh, with regulatory interactions and presentations with regulatory authorities also engaging with patient advocacy groups trying to gather insights from patients from a compliant perspective and trying to incorporate the patient reported outcomes as part of the medical and evidence plans as we have said before, market access is one of the key tasks or, or key activities for pharmaceutical organizations, given the dependence in the commercial dependence on payers. So medical first has to uh, incorporate better in the in the market access plans through uh, one in building together the clinical value story, building together the messages about the unmet needs that patients and prescribers are having and other providers are having in, in the particular diseases that that, that they are targeting and uh, also 
trying to engage with different um, in, uh, stakeholders to communicate the messages that are more medical related. And on the other hand, we have as a final like tasks um, the, the 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 activity that was previously assigned to to the role about a uh, medical information and how can we deliver medical information from per, expert perspective to different stakeholders. So we see that we have four pillars: scientific expertise, evidence generation, stakeholder engagement, and patient centricity as the new pillars of the of the medical affairs role as a, as a more strategic role. However, how are we doing it? What's the outcome of, of this new role? So uh, McKinsey performed um, a survey with different stakeholders to try to identify which is the current level uh, of those of those engagements. Um, it seems that medical affairs has um, a, 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 an opportunity area to try to improve the quality and the satisfaction of the interactions. And it's it's natural. The world has been evolving. Other areas have been advancing before in terms of value communication and in terms of engaging with different levels of stakeholders. And, and it seems that for healthcare professionals, especially when in special when they are like other physicians that are not related to the to the diseases and um, other stakeholders as pharmacists and nurses, it seems that there is a, an important area of opportunity of trying to tailor messages that can resonate better with them and that can improve the, 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 the satisfaction of the interactions with the medical teams. And also, uh, it's important to see that uh, people that are related to value-based decisions as reimbursement and coverage are not so uh, are not so satisfied with the current level of the of the medical interactions. So, uh, medical organizations they they also have some uh, low satisfaction metrics about uh, the engagements of the medical teams with them. Uh, in more detail, they they perceive that it's only one a one way communication, and that uh, the medical teams are not. A creating messages that actually resonate with them. So it has like it, it's a coin that has two sides. One of them is the message. The message has to be to be tailored to, to these different uh, audiences, but also the channel. So the channel is very important. And we know that digital engagement uh, can be one of the of the of the different approaches to communicate with stakeholders in a better way. Um, it seems that the engagements of the medical teams won't won't be they won't look as they look today in the future, and medical affairs teams have to, have to be ready for that. Okay, so which are the things that are relevant in this new environment to communicate? It seems that uh, unmet need and burden of disease is extremely important, uh, an extremely important driver of, of value communication. Also, clinical efficacy information about comparators, information about safety, and as an as, um, unexpected outcome, price is not the most important driver for value. So we can see that a medical affairs teams have a huge responsibility in terms of the overall organization a communication strategy, because they are linked at least to the four more important value drivers for different stakeholders in the value chain and in the in the patient journey for the for a, for pharmaceutical products. Okay, so how that can be done? Um, now, um, one of the, of the things is the message. The message has to be more related to the current attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors in the stakeholders that we want to transform. Okay, so. Uh, using evidence and using data to try to create changes in attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors is a way to build sound messages that can that can resonate with the audiences. Okay, so but that's about the the message. 
but we also have challenges about the, the, the challenge, the, the channel. So uh, the, our value communicators as medical uh, as medical affairs uh, managers are part of, 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 that, of that set, are, they depend on the story and they also depend on the supporting evidence, okay? But they have to engage with different levels of stakeholders. There are several archetypes and all of them have the, the different preferences for receiving information. So when we think about the message, we have to think also in the channel at the same time. Um, and we also have to take uh, into consideration that we are not the only ones that are going to engage with these different stakeholders. So when we think about the message on the channel, we have to think about how can we differentiate in our communication with these different stakeholders. However, the tools that we com commonly use are uh, mostly PowerPoint presentations, some interactive PDFs, of course, uh, reports of uh, the clinical trials, uh, papers, uh, some uh, executive summaries, but th that's 90% of the tools that the medical affairs uh, teams are using to communicate medical value. Um, and now we, but th that leaves uh, us with a lot of uh, gaps in terms of the of, of the of the quality of this of the engagements. So we need to find tools that can create a balance between a flexibility in storytelling, a, the visual and the look and feel, the ability to calculate or to show different scenarios. For example, we want to show instead of a forest plot that uh, to convey uh, the message that our products are, uh, that the benefits are is a very, that they hold in different uh, populations, we can, Create calculations that can uh, that can show the impact in terms of response and in terms of survival for different of these groups. So, um, and, and we can also create um, messages that are linked to different subpopulations. But then we will need a channel to communicate those messages in the right way. And and now uh, we will talk about base case that can be used for achieving those purposes. So base case has three layers. The, uh, the first one is the, the device. It can be used in different devices, in, 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 in web, it can be used in an iPad. Um, here, I am, I am using base case, in fact, for this presentation. So I'm using it from a web browser, but it can be used in different devices. So medical teams, MSLs, med market, uh, medical affairs managers can have it in an iPad or can use it in different um, in, in using different devices and it can create interactive storytelling so you can go through different layers of content you can see you can have all your clinical information in a single tool but then have a different layers of it to communicate it you can have different navigation steps so we so you can incorporate a it different clinical um, trials, you can incorporate reward evidence, you can incorporate patient reported outcomes in a single tool and then use them as needed uh, with those different stakeholders. And also it's interesting that you can include, um, you can integrate with spreadsheets. So for example, if you have information about different subpopulations, different subgroups, or if you want, for example, to estimate the, the the impact for a patient of following a particular a treatment sequence instead of another, you can use a simple Excel and then you can upload it to the tool and you can use it to communicate the information that you that that you that you want to to, to transmit to the to the audiences. Okay. And you can create a lot of tools using this kind of platform. I have used it for creating our, our presentation, the, the webinar that, that you are attending today. But you can create dosing and prescription calculators. You can, for example, have a map of different, um, of different locations to try to convey information about uh, the difference in epidemiology, the difference in prevalence in incidence, the difference in uh, identified cases for orphan diseases, 
so you can create different kinds of information. You can also create simple toolkits that can have all your clinical information, all your clinical collaterals, videos, audio, in, in, inside of the same tool. You can create calculators to estimate candidate populations or to estimate uh, the information about the, the different approaches for treatment. You can create uh, also additional information um, about a uh, disease burden, not met need, uh, the adequate profiles of uh, your candidate patients. And you can also use it to collect the data from, from, from the stakeholders and from hospitals. So if you are trying to collect patient reported outcomes uh, or the, uh, the physician's experiences, uh, in, with some of the of the steps in the patient journey, you can use a tool, a digital tool, to 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 guide those engagements. So, um, as a summary, we have um, we have an evolving role of the of the medical affairs um, area, and that it's very based on in value communication and in, in in incorporating data from different sources to try to create a story that is aligned with the rest of the organization and that can help to, um, to change attitude, beliefs, and behaviors of different stakeholders to try to overcome those barriers along the patient journey. And uh, I will, we have a video, but I think that we are almost, we have almost ended, but it's just um, a way for you to see that we have, we can incorporate different media as part of the, of the tools. It's a summary of the things that we have seen about the platform. And um, the, the webinar was more about the this transformation of the medical role uh, for value communication. But of, co of course, if you want to, to have additional information about base case, um, we can schedule a, a call and we can schedule uh, some time for you to, to show us um, your challenges and for us to, to try to think in some ways that we can uh, create tools to help you engage in a better way with the stakeholders. That will be everything from my end. I don't know if we can open the, the, the space for questions or comments. Yes. yes, Christian, thank you very much for the, for the input. It was Super insightful, great presentation, thanks. Um, and we indeed have some questions. Um, as a reminder, please submit your questions through the chat pane and we will address them. A um, couple of questions already came through. And let's start with this one. Can we use complicated functions like Excel sheet on base case? Yes, yes, and yes, of course. In one of the, in my previous experiences, we were collecting a lot of data from different centers, and then we we needed to um, estimate the impact on some outcomes for patients in, in those centers. So that was done using an Excel tool that was making the calculations, and then it was uploaded to base case, so it can be presented in a in a nice appealing way to the to the external stakeholders without uh, compromising the ability to have to make these changes and to make different uh, scenarios that could resonate better with the different hospitals and the different uh, care settings all right great thanks um second question we have uh does base case have a function of approval workflow before deploying content Yes, um, as we know, um, all the, the content for medical engagement uh, has to be approved uh, through internal and external regulatory processes. And yes, we have a function that uh, can guide you. It's called a launch success, and it can uh, help you to get the approvals in your internal workflows. So it can integrate seamlessly with, with those workflows, and it can create a, a single file that has all the references and all the that you, you have used to create this this content thank you for that for that answer and the last question we have um for the moment is can we use multiple languages on base case 
yes, and there's a function to create automatic, uh, semi-automatic translations. So we can export the, the content of, um, of, of a tool to an Excel file, and it can be then uh, translated and the translation can be uploaded and um, with minor design adjustments because of text length, it can be distributed to different countries. So um, you can create a tool, a medical affairs tool that has evidence, and then you can copy it and distribute it to different countries, gaining a scalability and also, very important, keeping uh, the control of the version that you that, that it's uh, valid. One of the things that happens with medical affairs content is that they are distributed to the countries and then uh, the, it's very difficult to track which is the most updated version and to ensure that the, con that the countries are using their, the, 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 right, uh, the right version of the information. So uh, using base case can also help you to control those versions, uh, control the approval uh, workflows and ensure to the users that they are always having the most updated content um, based on the evidence. All right, thank you. Um, it seems that we don't have any more questions from the audience. And um, yeah, I think we can wrap it up for today. Um, again, thank you for, for joining us. As um, we mentioned before, we will send you the recording of the webinar in the next uh, few uh, days. Feel free to rewatch it, feel free to share it internally. Um, and if you have uh, more questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, with that, have a good day and take care. Bye. Thank you.